at work tonight. An exciting matchup of the Virginia Cavaliers kicking off their season at home and the one and two Louisville Cardinals. And how did we get here for this to be the Virginia season and home opener? Well, during these chaotic times of quarantine, their schedule got shifted around a little bit, having their first two exhibition matches against Clemson and Syracuse canceled and their first regularly seasoned, regularly scheduled season match October 3rd against Virginia Tech was postponed until just after this. October 14th is when that will be played. And so it's the Cavaliers looking to get off to a hot start after finishing second in the NCAA last season in a devastating loss to Georgetown, going seven penalty kicks deep after a 3-3 and to regulation and overtime. However, though it may be a new season, this Virginia team has kept a lot of weapons, returning 10 of their primary athletes. Of those 10, eight saw action in over 16 games. Of those 10, they account for 23 of the 46 goals scored by the Cavaliers last season. And if that wasn't enough, Virginia picked up what was ranked the number eight recruiting class this year, made up of eight true freshmen, three transfers, and two graduate transfers. Now they'll have the opportunity to show for the first time if this team can get it done. Now taking a look at the Cardinals, how we got here, started off their season with an exhibition match against Notre Dame, ending in a 1-1 draw followed by an exhibition loss to Pitt with a score of zero to five. Start their regular season against Wake Forest with a loss one to three, Kentucky a loss one to three, and then battle Notre Dame again most recently and come out on top 2-1, putting them at a 1-2 overall record and 1-0 in the ACC. As both teams take the field here at Klockner Stadium, a beautiful night in Charlottesville, Virginia. Clear skies, 64 degrees. And speaking on the way that the season began for the Virginia Cavaliers, leader on the team, Brett Halsey, just said, you know, we've been itching to get onto the field. It's been a long wait for these guys, seeing several of their matches canceled, being forced to play inter-squad scrimmages, and they couldn't have been given a better night for it. As the officials head out to the center spot, both teams prepare for action to kick off the Virginia Cavaliers regular season and for all the boys watching right now for any young aspiring soccer players this Virginia team is second to none in their performance and their talent and they have an opportunity to once again do big things however this year means a little bit more for this team than just a potential national championship as Head coach George Gelnovac enters into his 25th year at this university, picking up two national championships, five ACC championships, six college cup appearances, and 24 consecutive NCAA tournaments, looking to make it 25 this year. As Louisville heads out to prepare to take the first kick of the match, and a little bit damp, you could see some of the perspiration still lying on the field. Gonna create some slicker conditions. Bring out the extra spikes on those boots. And getting into the match here as the first whistle blows. Both teams going to take a knee. Are committed to seeing each other as equals, supporting each other and treating each other with respect and dignity at all times. Recognizing that our differences don't divide us, but they make us stronger. The two teams are taking a moment of silence to reflect on our commitment to unity. And after a moment of silence to represent both of these teams' commitment to unity in these troubling times, the match looks like it will be getting underway. Your starters for the Virginia Cavaliers in goal. Number one, Colin Shuttler. What can't you say about Shuttler? A phenomenal athlete, a leader on this team. The lowest career goal average against of any active NCAA goalie with 
as that ball is put out and will be a Cardinal throw in. The rest of the starters, number four, Reed Kessler. Number five, Oliver Gerbig. Number seven, Spencer Patton. Number eight, Brett Halsey. Number nine, Philip Horton. Number 10, the co-captain, Nathaniel Crofts. Number 11, Irikozi Danasiano. Number 12, Kevin Ogudu. Ogudu, Ogudugu, excuse me. Number 17, Andreas Ulin. And number 21, Joan Hibbert. As Shuttler collects one already, puts it out, and Louisville will remain in the attacking third. For the Cardinal, Cardinals, their starters, number two, William Portman. Number three, Lamine Conti. Number four, Haji Abdi, Abdi Kidar. Number seven, Pedro Fonses, Fonseca. Number eight, Jack Fastine. Number nine, Emil Elvaroth. Number 10, Carlos Sanchez. Number 13, Bradley Sample. Number 17, Elijah Amo. Number 24, Bryce LaBelle. And you see him there on your screen as he puts that ball past the midfield. Number 31, Jake Gelnavach. A familiar name for UVA soccer fans, but perhaps not a familiar face. Jake, the son of head coach George Gelnavach of this Virginia team, a family rivalry heading into tonight as Louisville takes an opportunity to set things up with the back line. Nathaniel Crofts trying to meet the ball for the Cavaliers. You're gonna see a lot of activity from these Virginia forwards and midfielders putting pressure on that Louisville back line, something that they were very proficient at all throughout last season was creating opportunities as other teams try to set things up in their backfield and making it difficult for Louisville to get past that half field line as that one's gonna roll all the way back as Eulen tries to block out Shuttler. Now the Cardinals forced to send it all the way back to Gelnovac and he's gonna look over his options. Conti back to Gelnovac. Pressure being applied from number nine, Philip Horton, the sophomore for the Cavaliers who saw great minutes as an off the bench player last year getting his start for the Cavaliers season home opener. As the Cavaliers swing it around to the other side of the field, it's Patton forced to send that one back to Gerbic. And you can see number 17, Andreas Ulin, the co-captain with Nathaniel Crofts. He will be wearing the captain's band this evening. Only a sophomore on this team, but awarded the position of co-captain. How did he get there? Well, named a freshman All-American at the end of last season played every minute of every match as a true freshman as the Cavaliers a chance to put something together poked away as Crofts couldn't put quite enough on the ball and they'll be forced to put it back out and re-attack as Halsey lays it over to Donaciano. But as I was saying Andreas Ulin plays every minute of every match as a true freshman one of eight named as a top underclassman prospect by top drawer soccer, a young guy with a lot of talent for these Cavaliers as they're going to get their first chance at a corner kick here in Klockner Stadium in 2020. And heading over to take it will be number 21, Joan Hibbert. 5'7", 168, a graduate student from Barcelona, Spain. Getting an opportunity to start something for the Cavaliers with 40-38 remaining. They play it short, trying to put it back in. A lot of opportunities, but forced out by the Cardinals and left to Brett Halsey. Halsey, room to go. Sends it to Crofts, one on him. Tries to make a move, can't get it done, but it's Halsey who ends up back with the ball. Louisville packed very tightly in on the Cavaliers right now, trying to prevent any easy balls inside as Virginia's forced to just move it outside around the perimeter. Probing each side to find something, it's Gerbig, sends it back to Uland. 
Eulen going to try to make something, sends it over to Spencer Patton. Inside, Horton gets a touch on it, but isn't able to collect, and after a little bit of physical contact, it will be Louisville ball just outside of the 18. And in the first five and a half minutes of this match, this Cavalier team, though it is their first appearance on a field this season, they look very composed and very aggressive. Trying to create any opportunity as Gelnovac directs his team. And a good ball there, but falls back to the Cavaliers. Ogudugu couldn't quite control it, but it does fall back as Spencer Patton takes this throw in. Cavaliers trying to go back with Patton, someone who was a big time playmaker for the minutes that he received last season. Trying to connect there with number 12, Kevin Ogudugu, but hasn't quite found one of those balls to go through, but you've got to appreciate the consistent pressure that the Cavaliers are putting on the Cardinals, rarely allowing them to enter into the attacking third. As Gelnovac puts this one long again. Cardinals retain possession. A good move there, gets it. And a little bit of miscommunication as Pedro Fonseca did not make the run that they thought he would, and now it's going to be a goal kick for the Cavaliers. And as Shuttler tried to take that one a little bit fast, the official's going to call him back and have him reset. Shuttler trying to prevent a dangerous situation, puts it long, but the Cardinals still trying to find a way into this Virginia defense as that ball is out of bounds and will be a Cardinal throw in taken. Decide to not take it quickly. Leave it back for Lamine Conti. Conti from Guinea. Played high school at YSC Academy and then the University of Mobile before coming to Louisville. Now a red shirt senior. He puts that one all the way back to the Cardinal back line at midfield and they're gonna try to reform their attack. And Horton continuing to be a presence up at the forward position. Now the Cardinals on a bit of a run here, taken out to the outside, it's Amo. He's got Donaciano on him with Halsey's help. Halsey's got the ball. Going to try to control and set something up. And a missed touch there by Donaciano almost causes them the possession. But the Cavaliers continue to hold it and send it back to Shuttler, who will get that one out of the 18. Both teams looking for their first opportunity. Now nine minutes into the match as that ball is put out of bounds by Oliver Gerbig. And for all the live sports fans out there, they'll be encouraged to see some fans in the stadium. It's limited capacity fans at Klockner Stadium right now including, of course, the player, or the families of the players on the field. But great in these somewhat troubling times to see fans at live sports. It's a dangerous opportunity. Shuttler caught out of position, and the ball towed over the goal by number 10, Carlos Sanchez. And a Virginia team that does not give very many opportunities to score could be a costly mistake there by Sanchez for the Cardinals. And just when we said we hadn't seen an opportunity yet, one presents itself on a silver platter for Louisville. And now the Cavaliers might be feeling a little bit more anxious to get this ball out of their attacking third. 
as the Cardinals look to be starting to take control of this game. They try to put a ball through, a little bit too much on it. And now Shuttler is going to get a stop and play to try to create some sort of offense for the Cavaliers. That ball's put high up into the air, and it will be a foul called against Louisville. Phillip Horton does a good job of positioning his body in such a way to create that opportunity, and now the Cavaliers going to get a free shot and an attack here starting at the midfield. That one goes to Halsey, back to Euland. Back to Euland. 33-48 remaining in the first half. That one goes to Denasiano with some pace met well by the Cardinals and forced out of bounds, but it will remain Virginia Ball as Crofts. Also wearing the captain band as a co-captain with Euland sends it back, and it's going to be Halsey being met with some pressure, forced to send it all the way back to Euland at the midfield. Cavaliers struggling to create anything offensively as it now looks to be the Cardinals who are the aggressive force in this match. And a team that was really successful based off of their speed now being forced to slow play down and create something against a strong Cardinals defense early in this match. Sending it down to Patton. And we touched on several reasons why this game is significant for the Virginia Cavaliers. Not only is it the season home opener, not only is it the beginning of the 25th year of this program under the head coach of George Gelnovac, this is also the opportunity for the Cavaliers to get their 300th win at Klockner Stadium since its opening in 1992. And you want to talk about a home field advantage. Klockner Stadium has held at least one NCAA tournament match in all 28 years of its, its existence. And the Virginia Cavaliers have an 81% win percentage when playing at Klockner Stadium over the 28 years that it has been around. A phenomenal statistic and really a testament to the fantastic program that head coach George Gelnovac has built over his past 24 years here. Gelnovach, one of nine coaches with 24 more years at only one school and his 338 career wins here is the most of any active NCAA coach, the most of any of those groups of nine coaches with 24 years at one university. And once again, just a testament to what he has done for this program is his son, playing at the opposing team, clears that ball out for Louisville. A great dynamic there between father and son as they square off. Looking at the matchup history of these two teams, Louisville has a lead on the Cavaliers, 3-2-1. As that ball gets down and bats the Cavalier defense, Trying to create something, they go in, no one there get, it gets through and it's Shuttler off of his cleats. He manages to force that one out and once again, the Virginia defense caught miscommunicating with Shuttler and a dangerous opportunity created. And another opportunity will arise as the Cardinals get ready for their first corner kick of the evening. And you can tell there, no one seemed to be inside the six. And the Virginia Cavalier back line just in miscommunication with Shuttler about who was going to grab that ball creates an opportunity for the Cardinals. And now they have another. High ball sent over the box. Cavaliers try to get it. Ball touched out of bounds by Reed Kessler, the redshirt freshman defender. 
younger brother of former Virginia soccer player Henry Kessler, who now plays for the New England Revolution after leaving the school as an underclassman to go into the MLS draft. As Patton pokes that one out, continuing to try to slow down this Louisville team. And it's Donaciano who gets beat up the sideline. Cardinals try to put it in, but Cavaliers trying to find the, a way out for the ball as Crofts tries to take him down the sideline. A good move, but isn't enough. And the ball falls into the lap of Oliver Gerbig. But once again, the Cavaliers unable to get any sort of clearance. And it's Louisville ball again. Donaciano blocks that pass and puts the ball out of bounds. And though the Virginia Cavaliers came in as a preseason ranked number three, fell to number five before this evening, though they did not play a match yet, it seems to be the Cardinals who are control of the pace of this match right now. As the Cavaliers get a break, and it'll be Donaciano going to collect the ball. High ball there from Eulen trying to get something going with Horton. Didn't quite make it, but it's Crofts who finds it. His pass deflected, still fighting for possession. Now it's the Cardinals. Crofts aggressively fighting for the ball, forces it down in just outside the 18. And a good move there by William Portman. Trying to keep the possession alive, taken away by Gerbig. He's got it in the back corner, trying to create some space to get it out, but instead loses control and loses possession as the Cardinals going to get a deep throw in. Cavaliers still not finding their rhythm, sitting with 27-23 left in the first half of their home season opener. Sent up to the top, trying to put it in. It's a high ball. The Cardinals connect with it, and another strike goes up and outside the right corner of the ball, trying for the volley there was number nine, Emil Elveroth, the six-foot forward from Sweden. Can't quite get the right aim on it, and another fortunate break as the Cardinals put their third shot on goal, excuse me, third shot attempt. Still yet to get one within the frame. And the Cavaliers fighting to get any sort of offense going as they remain in their defensive third. That ball put long. Crofts looked like he was going to get there, but the flag is up and offsides is called on number 10, the co-captain, Nathaniel Crofts. And possession will go back to Louisville. As a slow take here, Louisville running some time off the clock as Gelnovich steps out of the 18 to take this free kick. And a lot of heat on that ball as it connects with Andreas Eulen trying to create something. And a little bit of contact there from Philip Horton sends number four, Haji Abdi Kadir, to the ground. A little bit slow to get up, but seems to be okay. Nonetheless, that act will award them a free kick. Cardinals try another ball, won't go there. Both teams just seem to be slightly off on their touches early in the season. Now the Cardinals a real chance to attack. Met well by the Cavalier defense, and now it's the Cavaliers trying to move the other way. Ogudugu passes it back. Gerbig to Uland, 
And now it's Euland who's going to try something on the other side. Kessler making his way up to the midfield, and that little three-man back line game continues to be the bread and butter for the Cavaliers right now. That ball deflected as Patton tried to connect. Wasn't able to, and now it's back to the Cavalier back line. Euland still trying to find a connection with connection with Patton. Tries to make a one-on-one -on -one move, manages to get the ball around. Now into the middle, Brett Halsey with a chance to attack for the Cavaliers. Over to Kessler, Donaciano. Just within the 18, trying to make a play down. And it looks like with that tackle, a corner will be awarded off the foot of number eight, Jack Fastine. The sophomore from Louisville, Kentucky is going to give the Cavaliers their second shot at a corner, now on the opposite side. Played it short on the first one, not something that we usually see out of this Cavalier team that has been so dominant on their set pieces in previous years. And now it is Patton who steps back to take it. Cavaliers scatter. The ball is up. Looks like it could have been, but won't yet. Still within the 18. Lays it off to Crofts. Crofts gets beat. It's the Cardinals going the other way, and Donaciano, a big-time play to slow that down and force the Cardinals to make a bad touch and put it out of bounds at what was going to be a very dangerous situation. Brett Halsey, a high IQ play there, picking up. Number 10, Carlos Sanchez, who looked like he was going to be all by himself had Donaciano not come in between that ball. 22 minutes left. Despite a good corner there, momentum still definitely seems to be favoring the Cardinals. As Spencer Patton picks up this throw in. Trying to go downfield. As that ball goes off the chest of Horton. And as Spencer Patton puts that one down, looks like there could be an opportunity here. Trying to run it down is Kevin Ogudugu. Wasn't quite able to get to it though, and it will be Gelnovac taking another goal kick. And there were high expectations coming into this season for the Virginia Cavaliers. As we mentioned, returning 10 of their primary athletes, coming off a phenomenal second place finish in, finish in the NCAA tournament. Regulation of that game and overtime ending at 3-3 and falling short to Georgetown at the seventh PK. Despite the losses of Joe Bell, Daryl DK, Henry Kessler, and Daniel Steedman, this team has a lot of talent, a lot of cohesion already built up with some great new pieces from that number eight ranked recruiting class, eight true freshmen, three transfers, and two graduate transfers. And I think Gelnovac right now with 20 minutes remaining in this first half is still trying to see what this team can do. Because you definitely cannot undersell what Joe Bell, Daryl DK, Henry Kessler, and Daniel Steedman each brought to this Cavalier program. Four phenomenal athletes that were leaders both on and off the field for these guys. And when you lose that, You've got to make a chemistry readjustment, and now it's everyone looking to Euland and Crofts as the two co-captains, Halsey, Patton, Horton, guys that did see a lot of time and made great contributions last year, Donaciano as well as he puts that one back. But George Gelnovac right now is seeing what he's got, and as that ball can't go, he's still seeing glimpses of what could be really great soccer that this Cavalier team is just waiting to start put together, 
to start to put together, excuse me. As that ball goes back to Kessler and he'll send it back to Shuttler. And one of those guys that definitely is going to need to be a leader for this Virginia team is Colin Shuttler, the 6-1 goalkeeper who, as I mentioned earlier, has the lowest career goals against average of any active NCAA goalkeeper at .53. He was a 2019 first-team All-American and a preseason first-team All-American, someone who has contributed so much to this Virginia Cavalier soccer program over his tenure. And he's looking to do something special this year. 19.02 remaining in the first half. The Cavaliers look like they start, look like they're starting to gel a little bit out on the pitch. As the Cardinals put it back to their back line and try to generate something after a bit of a drought here. And we think back to that opportunity at the very beginning of the game, a one-on-one -on -one situation towed over the goal from the Cardinals, and that could be one that comes back to haunt them if this Cavalier team starts to heat up, which we have seen them do time and time again. And of all people, the Cardinals may be one of the more familiar teams with it in their last meeting. UVA scored the first goal 61 seconds into the match. In October of last year, that game ended with a 2-0 final score Though Louisville outshot UVA 7-4 in the second half, they could not find the back of the net, and they are looking for revenge, trying to keep the edge in their series with Virginia that started in 2013. As I mentioned, the Cardinals currently lead 3-2-1. Patton trying to even that as he puts a ball in, and the Cardinals once again are all over it. A good back touch there by Halsey, trying to create some offense with pace. Iracozzi, green space is in front of him, goes to the inside. Horton missed his touch. Ball still up in the air, and the Cavaliers might be able to do something here. Under the 18, it's Patton. Sends it up to Halsey. Halsey trying to find something on the inside. He'll give it to Donaciano, and the Cavaliers are going to try to set up a settled offense. Halsey with a high IQ play, gets it out. Now a chance to go. It's Crofts, three in front of him, loses possession. Cavaliers fighting to hold it, and they will. Patton, green spaces. Probing this Cardinals defense. Patton gets inside the 18, and that ball is sent up into the limited capacity stands. And the Cavaliers will keep possession. And if you're just joining us here, 1635 remaining in the first half of the Virginia Cavaliers home season opener against the one and two Louisville Cardinals. It's been a back and forth match all night. Cavaliers struggled to create offense thus far. Cardinals have had a few good opportunities, but have been unable to find the back of the net. This is NCAA Division I men's soccer here on the ACC Network. I'm William Fauche. It's a pleasure to have you with us here in Charlottesville on this beautiful evening and a great evening for soccer. As that ball goes off of the referee as it was trying to be sent inside to Joan Hibbert, the official will blow the whistle and the Cavaliers will take the ball. There's the drop. Halsey collects and sends it to Donaciano. Euland trying to create something down the sideline to Patton. Patton, large touch on it, but manages to keep possession. And you can see the Cavaliers trying to work those sidelines right now all last season. They were so dominant using their speed and athleticism to beat teams down the sideline and using their raw talent and skill to put that ball into the box in the right place to create offense. They haven't been able to do it just yet, but with this Cavalier team, it's only a matter of time as Euland Sends it down, and they're going to try again. Ogudugu 
fighting hard for the ball against William Portman. The whistle blows and a foul will be called on Ogudugu and it will be Gelnovac taking the free kick here. And Gelnovac being Jake, the goalkeeper for Louisville, looking for some redemption here, has played in the last two games against his father's team in 2017 and 2019 and is 0-2. Now in his redshirt season season, redshirt senior season, excuse me, is looking to find a W against the old man. As a whistle is blown and it will be a free kick awarded to Virginia as the official has a brief word with number 10, Carlos Sanchez, the midfielder out of Madrid, Spain. And already tonight, you can see how important Andreas Uland is to this team, constantly in possession of the ball as a center back, organizing his team, trying to create offense as the flag is up. And it looks like we will see a substitution here. George Gelnovac using his first substitution of the evening as number nine, Philip Horton, will check out of the match for number 13, excuse me, Number 18, Axel Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson, the six foot forward out of Gothenburg, Sweden. A massive contributor to last year's team, did not start tonight, but now has a chance to make an impact when the Cavaliers need it most. It's Denasiano fighting to get over the top and he'll draw a free kick in dangerous opportunity for the Cavaliers. For longtime Virginia soccer fans, they'll know that in previous years, this was Robin Afamefuna and Joe Bell territory just outside the 18, where they could just be lethal in finding the back of the net. But now, a new year, a new team. It looks like it will be number seven, Spencer Patton, and number 21, Joan Gibber Hibbert, at the spot to take this one. Patton lined up to the right, Hibbert lined up behind. Cavaliers scrambling just at the top of the 18. It will be Patton who chips it up. Cardinals get possession, but off the header it will fall out the back line and a corner kick will be awarded to the Cavaliers as Patton jogs over to take it. Now the Cavaliers third corner kick. They have not converted on one yet. Their second opportunity looked dangerous. Now let's see if the third time's the charm. Crofts unmarked at the top of the 18. Had his hands up, calling for it, didn't get it. Now a chance, the ball's up, off. Couldn't find the frame there. A great deflection from the Cardinals defense as Oliver Gerbig put a lot of heat on that shot. But he'll retain possession and send it all the way back to Colin Shuttler. A great attacking chance for the Cavaliers. Once again, probing the attack. Oliver Gerbig tries to get into Patton. That ball is intercepted. A good heel touch there to create some space, and it's the Cardinals forcing the ball out of their attacking third, but to no prevail as Andreas Uland is there to collect. That ball goes in, Gunnarsson fighting for it. It goes to Hibbert, Hibbert lays it off to Patton. A chance here as the ball's up. He tries to put it on frame and an easy grab for Gelnovac as he slows things down and tries to get his team into position. And right now, you've got to commend the composure of both of these teams. They've had several chances. They haven't found anything to really work for them yet. But with 10-18 remaining, no one is flustered. No one is forcing it. They're just working through their early season, trying to see what works for them and what doesn't. And so far, though the last 10 minutes have been dominated by Virginia, the Cardinals still look to be the more dangerous team on this pitch. As they try to get clearance to Crofts, who lays it back for Denasiano. 
It's Kessler with room in front of him. Instead, ops back to Shuttler who puts it out quickly. But with no one there and a miss header from Elijah Amo, number 17, it will be Cavalier ball. Euland dribbling it up himself. Long ball on the ground. Does not connect with Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson fighting hard for it. Isn't enough. And now it's a Kessler and Donaciano tag team trying to force the ball out of the sideline. Now pushing into the middle. That one gets through. Fighting for it there. A whistle is blown. The flag is up and it will be off sides on the Louisville Cardinals. As Shuttler rolls it out. So far, the Cardinals two shots, the Cavaliers, excuse me, the Cardinals three shots, the Cavaliers two shots, both have one shot on goal. And right now, the Cavaliers sitting with six fouls, a team that's normally incredibly disciplined in that regard. Perhaps getting off some of that beginning of the season rust, shaking off some nerves. But with 8.26 remaining in the first half, we still find ourselves drawn at zeros. And it's the Cardinals who are going to look for a way to break that and get it out of their own defensive third here. Portman trying to fight. He'll get through several. Comes back to Portman. A long touch there. Has too much on it. It makes an easy cleanup for the Cavaliers as they look to take it the other way. An opportunity. He's got Crofts on the inside. But a whistle is blown. And it looks like an off-ball foul will be called on the Cardinals, and it'll be Cavalier ball as he backs up the Cardinals' defense. Hibbert and Patton on the ball. Lay it off to Halsey. Halsey kind of being put into the position of Joe Bell previously at that center mid, bouncing around, trying to free himself up, someone that has so much skill and finesse. When in possession of the ball, a great choice from head coach George Gelnovac. Cavaliers staying composed as ever as they send it all the way across to Donaciano and try to probe the other side. Nothing there. He gives it to Kessler. Patton gets a header. It's Crofts fighting for it. A little extracurricular physical contact does not get called. And as the ball is put out of bounds and boxed out by Portman, it will be Gelnovac taking another goal kick. The Cavaliers have found their way into that zone just beneath the 18, but have not yet been able to get it into a dangerous position. Some substitutions being made for the Cardinals as number 20, Nico Diaz, number 27, Abu Bakar Kamara, and number 14, Eric Danqua. Check into the game. Three substitutions for Louisville, one substitution thus far for Virginia, that being Axel Gunnarsson. And with short time left, Louisville going to try a new look to go up 1-0 on the number five ranked Cavaliers in Klockner Stadium where they have a 81% win percentage. And where they're looking for their 300th win at home, a chance to break that opportunity for them right here in this corner. As number four, Haji Abdi Kadir goes over to take this corner, he has Number eight, Jack Fasting, short, guarded by Crofts and a host of Cardinals, or should I say a flock of Cardinals at the top of the 18. Sent in, 
contact from both sides. But as Danasiano hits the ground, the whistle is blown, and it will be Shuttler with a free kick. That ball is up, a whistle is blown. Halsey still on the ground after contact with Eric Danqua from Louisville. Cavaliers try to play it there, but official stopping play is Halsey. So you can see over on the right side of your screen next to the official, a little bit slow to get up after landing on his ankle weird while trying to collect that ball. Has a word with the official to make sure he's okay, and the ball now resides at the foot of Andreas Euland. 3.53 remaining in the first half of play of the Cavaliers' home season opener. This is NCAA Division I men's soccer, and it's great to be back here with live sports, limited fans in the stand on the grounds of the University of Virginia. It's a beautiful night for the beautiful game as another whistle is blown. And some words here being had as a yellow card is put up into the air and it looks like it will be awarded to number seven, Spencer Patton. And he'll pick that one up with short time left in the first half as play stops now for the official to record it Unfortunately, it was off our screen. We are broadcasting this game remotely while it is being played in Clockner Stadium. Our crew and myself are just across the street over at John Paul Jones Arena in abidance with COVID-19 regulations. But nonetheless, it's a Great night for soccer with 321 left. The score still drawn at zeros despite opportunities from both teams. But now it's the Cardinals after making three late substitutions. They're going to try to change something up and find the back of the net. Instead, Halsey collects. Now it's Crofts. Crofts has two on him. Gunnarsson in front. Cozy behind. Instead goes to Halsey who will give it back to Kessler. Right back to Euland. Euland, options in front of him, going to attack the right side. Kessler, green spaces in front of him. The Cardinals looking to make him dribble into trouble. And you've got to appreciate the patience of this Cardinals defense in allowing the Cavaliers to put themselves in positions to turn over the ball, and that's been the name of the game thus far. The Cavaliers have just been a bit off on each of their touches, and that has allowed the Cardinals to really be dominant in this game thus far. As that throw in goes deep, it's Patton trying to collect it. He's got help from Halsey. Halsey fighting hard with Danqua. And after a little push off there, it will be awarded to the Cardinals. 146 remaining in the first half. Short time for the Cardinals to create something. Since 3.30, they've been unable to get it out of their own defending half, excuse me. As the Cardinals try to sell a free kick there, can't get it to go, and now they're going to pop that ball way up into the air and try to create a one-on-one -on -one situation. Patton on the ground, but isn't enough to stop play. The Cardinals try to chase it out, but aren't quite kick enough as there now seems to be some debate over whether a handball was had. The official will blow the whistle to stop as the Cardinals seem to be moving a little bit too slowly for the orange shirt's liking. 105 remaining. It's Crofts trying to be aggressive and create some sort of counter in a potential one-on-one -on -one situation, but as a Cardinal dives to the ground, 
It will be a free kick as the official steps back now to have a word with Crofts, perhaps a little bit of extracurricular contact following his aggressive play on the ball. Clock will stop once again with 43 seconds remaining. The Cavaliers do not want to pick up a second yellow card this half. As we've mentioned, a team that is generally very disciplined in that regard has seen nine fouls in the first half, including a yellow card from Spencer Patton. And now it's the co-captain, Nathaniel Crofts, continuing to plead his case with the head official to no prevail. And it looks like it will be Cardinal Ball just short of midfield with 431, excuse me, 43.1 seconds remaining in the first half. Cardinals started the half off hot, have slowed down a little bit offensively, but a chance to put something together here in the final seconds. Moving to the top of the 18, two in front of him, tries to put it in, but brilliantly headed away by the Cavalier defense. That was number four, Reed Kessler. And now it's the Cardinals trying to quick take the corner. 23 seconds left. It is Adbi Kadir for the Cardinals. Flies this ball up into the 18 with some mustard on it. The line drive doesn't connect enough. And it's sent all the way out as that ball is put out of bounds. And the final three seconds will tick off the clock at Klockner Stadium. And your score at the end of the first half, 0-0, as the number five ranked Cavaliers look to take a win, their 300th win at home for the season home opener of George Gelnovac's 25th year at the university. We will be right back with your second half action here on the ACC Network after this.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to this coverage of NCAA Division I men's soccer here on the ACC Network. It's the Virginia Cavaliers and the Louisville Cardinals drawn at zeros. As we begin the second half, I'm William Fauche. It's a pleasure to have you with us this evening for the Virginia Cavaliers season home opener as they chase their 300th win in Clockner Stadium. Let's take a look at the first half of action by the numbers. The Louisville Cardinals, three shots to the Cavaliers, two. Both have one shot on goal, one save. The Cavaliers with nine fouls, the Cardinals with six. The Cavaliers picking up one yellow card from Spencer Patton, both teams with three corners. Louisville making three substitutions, UVA making one. And as I just mentioned, head coach George Gelnovach and his Virginia Cavaliers trying to start their, his 25th year at Virginia with his three, with the 300th win at home since the opening of Clockner Stadium in 1992. The Cavaliers, 81% win percentage at home, and they're looking to boost that statistic this evening. Though a home game for the Cavaliers, the momentum has been largely dominated by the Cardinals, who have had the real attacking chances here despite the two shots that the Cavaliers have seen. The Cardinals were able to create some fantastic offensive opportunities at the beginning of the match. However, once the Cavaliers started to gel together as it is their first match and find their stride, things got a little bit more difficult for them. An opportunity, as an opportunity is squandered for them there by number five, Oliver Gerbig. Cavaliers spent most of the first half probing the sidelines as we've seen them do in previous seasons. Didn't have much luck as William Portman forces Iracozzi Donaciano off the ball and gives another goal kick to Jake Gelnovac. And Jake Gelnovac, the keeper for the Louisville Cardinals, and George Gelnovac, the head coach of the Virginia Cavaliers, not the only connection that we see on the field this evening. William Portman from the Louisville Cardinals and Nathaniel Crofts from the Virginia Cavaliers, the co-captain, both from the same hometown of Sheffield, England. And now meet each other on the pitch in this beautiful Charlottesville evening. As that ball goes back to Shuttler. Match started at 64 degrees, now a crisp 61. As both of these teams look to heat up despite the chill in the air. It's now a throw in for the Cavaliers. This one taken by number three, Isaiah Bird, who checked in at the beginning of the half. Philip Horton also back into the game as he pops that one out. And now it's Iracozzi Donaciano at the sideline. Portman in front of him. Portman's been formidable all evening against Donaciano. Has not let a ball get by him and won't there either. as Eulen pops that one to Kessler. The Cardinals still daring Kessler to dribble into their defense. He's yet to do so, but that might be what it takes to start to generate things for the Cavaliers as Bird makes a good move and gets it up to the top. Halsey, Donaciano with a lot of green space in front of him instead, lays it off and now trying to get it down and in. A dangerous opportunity here for the Cavaliers just inside the 18. They pop it back out. Donaciano is up, but it's Gelnovac all by himself in the middle of the six to collect and slow things down. And Gelnovac, while the stat sheet might only show one save in his 48 minutes of play so far, he has been absolutely phenomenal in goal. He's been a leader for their defense. He's come out when he's needed to come out. He stood his ground when he's needed to stand his ground. And the Cardinals have got to be happy with how this redshirt senior is starting his season. Only three matches in for them. We did mention Virginia having their season home opener right now. If you're just joining us, they saw their first two exhibition matches against Clemson and Syracuse canceled. 
and their first regular season schedule match against Virginia Tech postponed to the 14th. It will be their next match after this as Halsey collects and sends it down to Bird. One-on-one -on, -one on the sideline, tries to take it up top. For the Louisville Cardinals, as they get a potential breakaway here, it's Donaciano running down the ball. Cardinals still trying to move their way up. Play it over to the sideline. Nico Diaz lays it off to Jack Fasti, and Fasti trying to go long. Diaz there for it, but unable to collect. Now for the Cardinals, currently sitting at a 1-2 and two record, but 1-0 and oh in the ACC. Drew their first exhibition match against Notre Dame. Three losses in a row, 0-5, 1-3, to Pitt, Wake Forest, and Kentucky, respectively, and found their first victory against Notre Dame with a 2-1 final score heading into this match, giving them that 1-0 ACC standing. Trying to make it 2-0 this evening while the Cavaliers look to start their season off with a win. It is their seventh straight season opener at home. And under Gelnovac, they're 18-6 in their openers and are currently on a six-year win streak, trying to keep that streak alive as they lay the ball into Crofts. Crofts trying to push it inside the 18. They're going to fight for a corner. Ball kept in play, but unfortunately at the foot of the Cardinal and cleared out to Kessler. Kessler still looking a little bit uncomfortable with the ball. And the Cardinals still daring him to run in with it. Now it's Euland who's going to try his luck. Down the sideline, he gets it to Bird. Bird has Crofts to the right. Instead goes to Halsey up top. Hibbert trying to collect it, but won't be enough. And it's Euland who's going to send it all the way back to Colin Shuttler, who will set things up once again for the Cavaliers. A chance here. Crofts inside and a goal! Nathaniel Crofts, he's been looking to slip under the Cardinals' D all night long. And in his one-on-one -on -one opportunity, he puts it through the five hole and finds the back of the net. 37-58 remaining in the first half. It took him, excuse me, in the second half. It took him all the first half to heat up, but it is the Cavaliers who strike first in their season home opener with who other than number 10, the co-captain, leading returning scorer for the team, Nathaniel Crofts. A phenomenal play from a phenomenal athlete to now give the Cavaliers the 1-0 advantage that they were looking for. And now, it's going to be up to the Cardinals in a tense of their resilience as that ball gets poked away and it's the Cavaliers again trying to go on Portman. Portman loses a step on him but fights hard to keep it, drags to the ground, number 12, Kevin Ogudugu. And it will be Crofts taking this free, free kick, sending it back to the Cavalier defensive line. And if you're the Cavaliers right now, that is a weight off of your shoulders. As time ticked by, just waiting to see how long it would take them at the beginning of their season to find a goal, and they're lucky to find it there and a fantastic one-on-one -on -one with the keeper from a great cut, a great pass, and a great finish from Nathaniel Crofts. Now it's Euland trying to do it again. Crofts in that same little area, just outside the corner of the 18, they give it to him. Now it's to Horton. Horton, room to go. Instead tries to play it to Halsey. Forced to hook around, he gives it to Crofts. Crofts, he's got the help of the Cavaliers around him. Instead, tries to dribble it in himself. Horton fighting for possession now, and a contested battle will lead to a Virginia throw-in. Playing it back to Hibbert, now Halsey, and all the way back to Kessler.
Hibbert back to Eulen. He's got green spaces in front of him. Eulen, though a center back, is someone who could be very dangerous on the offensive end as he puts it to Iracozzi to Nassiano. And that ball just a little bit too much off of his foot. Nathaniel Crofts couldn't get to it. But we said that it was not a matter of if and a matter of when. Well, we are seeing it now as the Cavalier offense is starting to heat up at home. As the Cardinals now make a, another substitution, it is number 14, Eric Danqua, checking back into the game. We saw him check in late at the first half, out at the beginning of the second half, and now back again. And excuse me, it is Elijah Amo checking in for him. Amo, who started the game, reversing the substitution that they made. And as Crofts thought about making a run for that one, a whistle is blown and the offsides is called. And it's Gelnovac who's going to toss this one out and let one of his defenders take one for a change. 34-55 remaining. In the second half, here at Klockner Stadium, a beautiful Charlottesville night. Now it's the Cardinals looking to answer. The second half goal from the Cavaliers. They saw early opportunities. Now they're looking to get it going again, calling for the ball. There's the chip shot from number 13, Bradley Sample. Doesn't find the back of the net and some frustration there between the Louisville Cardinals offense as several people called for the ball, but Sample opted for the chip shot. And now it's Colin Shuttler who will take the goal kick. As the Cardinals see another substitution here, it's number nine, Emil El Elveroth checking in for Abu Bakar Kamara. And it's not surprising that we're seeing the Cardinals outweigh the Cavaliers in the category of substitution so much. Gelnovac, someone who plays a very European style of soccer, though a coach in the United States for now 25 years. He doesn't use very many substitutions especially as opposed to the Louisville team that likes to integrate so many legs in to try different options against this formidable Cav Cavalier team as they try another ball inside. Don't get it. There's the shot popped up into the air, but it's Gelnovac who comes out, grabs it, and collects things for the Cardinals. Looking for anything open here. He's forced to roll it inside the 18. Long ball there. The Cardinals trying to make something of it. It's Kessler. One on his back. And now it is Nico Diaz who collects. He's got Kessler in front of him. There's the Meg. Kessler forced to kick it out of bounds to prevent a dangerous situation. And it will be a Cardinal corner kick. The Cardinals' second quarter corner kick of the evening. compared to the three from the Virginia Cavaliers. 32-30 remaining and a big opportunity for an answer here from the Cardinals. Ball is in and cleared by the Cavaliers, but just outside the 18, it's the Cardinals who regain possession. Portman, met by Halsey, gets past him. Two in front of him, lays it off. Trying to create something there. It's the Cardinals looking for a handball. The official waves it off. And now it's the Cardinals trying to bring this ball down in an advantageous position. They might just be able to. But thanks to the work of the Cavalier back line, they will be prevented. And now it's Halsey to Donaciano. Both teams in a little bit of a back and forth game right now. Cardinals nowhere to go. And it's Sample, who just has to dribble it himself, lays it off. Cardinals now pushing to the middle. Surrounded by a pack of Cavaliers, it's Halsey who comes up with possession, lays it off. Now Donaciano holding it, slowing it, and trying to get something going with 31-13 remaining in the second half. 
Cavaliers lead 1-0 on the road to their 300th home win for the season home opener of head coach George Gelnovich's 25th season with the Cavaliers. And in those 24 previous years, now 25, he's put together quite a resume for himself as the Cardinals now look to bring things in. Two national championships, five ACC championships, six college cup appearances, and 24 consecutive NCAA tournaments as that ball clears away. And as Horton tries to run it down, it goes back to his son, who's he, who he has had the opportunity to play now three times. Unfortunately for Jake, he sits at 0-2 against his father, now down 1-0 with 30 minutes remaining. And it's the Cardinals trying to turn those tides. They have an opportunity to hear a fantastic slide tackle by Andreas Eulen. Slows things down, and now it's Diaz trying to attack. Easily cleared out and collected by Fastine. Now it's the Cardinals in some settled offense. But a missed touch there gives it right back to the Cavaliers. And it'll be interesting to see how the Cavalier team conducts themselves now. This was a team that we had seen sometimes last season score, feel confident, feel comfortable, and then sit back, and it cost them games but now in this new year, in this new season, coming off a second place finish in the NCAA tournament, do they have the drive, the persistence, the determination to keep their foot on the gas and try to run up the score? And right now we're seeing them try to probe and attack as they go back to Euland. And it took that team a while to develop that resilience and that mentality, but seeing it this early in the season, we could be looking at a very, very formidable Virginia Cavalier team, despite the current number five ranking in the country after falling two spots from their preseason number three. Cardinals trying to smother the Cavaliers in their defensive third. Now it's Euland with Halsey to his left, a dynamic duo between those two as they try to find some open spaces to work. It's Halsey who takes it and sends it back to Shuttler. Shuttler pursued aggressively by Bradley Sample, but easy clearance, and it's still the Cavaliers with Croft's help. A great body move there by the Cardinals, now going the other way. Croft's on the ball, and a foul potentially there as it's up and it will be a yellow card. But not awarded to Nathaniel Crofts, it will be awarded to the Louisville Cardinals. And it will be given to number 17, Elijah Amo. A little bit of extracurricular contact there with Crofts did not go his way. Now both teams sitting with one yellow card. It was Spencer Patton towards the end of the first half who picked up one for the Cavaliers. And if you're the Cardinals, 27 minutes remaining against a team as sound as the Cavaliers, you're going to have to start to play a little bit more aggressively if you want to try to have a chance to win this match as Horton Makes a good body, or excuse me, Bird makes a good body play on ball. And forces it out of bounds as the Cardinals are going to make another substitution here. And as the whistle blows, play will remain. And that substitution is Shuttler bats that ball down in dangerous position and looks to take off some clock. And the substitutions that we now see, UVA making a substitution, it's Kevin Ogadugu taken out in exchange for Axel Gunnarsson. 
And from Louisville, it's Nico Diaz who is taken out in favor of Aiden Nokus, who is getting his first minutes of the evening now with 26-23 remaining. Now Iracozzi, Donaciano for the Cavaliers. Lays it off to Halsey. Halsey, green spaces in front of him. Tries to lay it off, but now intercepted by the Cardinals. Cavaliers trying to get back. Playing aggressively at midfield, trying to hold possession. The Cardinals get out of a tough spot and now have a chance to attack, but it's Nathaniel Crofts trying to take it away from him. Pops the ball out of bounds into the stands. And the Cardinals, once again, forced to take a throw in, struggling to, to get any continuous ball movement up the field. Portman almost loses control of that one, but the Cardinals managed to retain possession. That ball's put up and easily batted away by Eulen. Putting it around a little bit, they give it back to Shuttler. Shuttler's got a lot of room and some options in front of him. Ops to put this one high away. Great head touch there, and it's Crofts. Crofts in a one on one. Makes a move, but a great play by Gelnovach. And you've got to commend the play there. A dangerous one on one opportunity from Nathaniel Crofts. Gelnovach stays out, stays on his line, makes himself big, and makes a big time play for the Louisville Cardinals in preventing a 2 0 Virginia lead. And you can tell he does not want to go 0-3 against his father in his redshirt senior season. He wants this one bad. A fantastic piece of goalkeeping from the six-foot redshirt senior from Earliesville, Virginia. 24-09 remaining. And the Cavaliers just ticking second and second closer to what could be their 300th win in Klockner Stadium since its opening in 1992. Shuttler, a big part of what's been happening today, a vocal leader helping organize the defense after a few slip-ups that we saw early in the game, creating some dangerous Cardinal opportunities. He's become more vocal. He's been leading his team, and the results have certainly shown, but it's an opportunity there. And just as a big play is made on the other end, it's Colin Shuttler who says no, 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 and puts that ball out of way on a fantastic diving save as it came off the foot of Aiden Nokus. A dangerous ball there that just slips past the Virginia defense reminiscing of the same errors that we were just discussing them having at the beginning of this match. And now perhaps the Cardinals are starting to generate some momentum. High ball there, punched out by Shuttler. Cardinals let it roll out and opt for a throw in. It's Portman who collects. Cavaliers getting more and more aggressive on defense here in their defensive third as Bird touches that one out and it's a Cardinal throw in from about the same spot. Elijah Amo hands it off to Portman. Portman puts it in. Fighting there at the end line. The ball is up and into the box. A missed touch there. But a good recovery play by Oliver Gerbig to force it out of bounds. It's a cardinal corner kick, their third of the evening. Excuse me, there's six. Twenty-one fifty. Cardinals seem to be on the brink of something as that ball's put long, and it's Amo who collects. Down 1-0, they need it here. Amo's got room. He's pushing in. The ball's inside, and Donaciano 
manages to barely get a foot on it to block what looked to be a goal as that ball gets past the defense and is put in the back of the net. A late whistle from the leading official. After the ball had already gone into the back of the net, he blows the whistle for the offsides upon Donaciano putting his hand up. But for a second there, it looked like he was going to let that one go. Now it's the Cavaliers pushing with pace the other way. Donaciano had a big play on the defensive end, now looking to create something here. Gets it inside. The ball is in, and Crofts just a few steps too short to touching that into a wide open net. 20-51 left. Both teams creating opportunities as the Cardinals trail 1-0 trying to prevent a one and three start to their season. The Cavaliers trying to start theirs with a win. As that ball gets through, but a whistle will be blown and a free kick will be awarded to the Cardinals. And a little bit slow to get up there is number seven, Pedro Fonseca from the Cardinals limping a little bit. It looks like he's gonna jog it off and be okay after time was stopped by the officials. And this Cardinal free kick falls at the foot of Bryce LaBelle who switches the sides of the field. Now it's the Cardinals trying to attack the sideline. Iracozzi to Nassiano on William Portman. Portman hits the ground and it's another Cardinal free kick. Both teams being very aggressive on the ball right now. The Cavaliers have to be careful to not let that translate into more fouls. Currently sitting with 12 fouls for a team that's on a regular day very disciplined as both teams see some substitutions here. Isaiah Bird going to come out after his foul in exchange for Spencer Patton. Patton who did pick up that yellow card in the first half has to be particularly conservative with his play. And Donaciano all over the field almost comes away with that one with pace, but instead forces a bad pass. And it's Reed Kessler who's gonna take the throw in for the Cavaliers, 19-13 remaining. Excuse me, he hands it off to Donaciano, who will put it in, but it gets intercepted by the Cardinals. And you can tell it's early season soccer here. When just the way that both of these teams play as an opportunity arises here for the Cardinals. Up at the top of the box, makes one move in the step. Great shot there from number seven, Pedro Fonseca. But once again, Colin Shuttler rises to the occasion and makes a reaching dive save. And you can see now where that .53 average goals against figure comes from, the lowest for active goalies in the NCAA. Colin Shuttler, a 2019 first year, first team All-American and preseason first team All-American, gets it done as that corner Goes fruitless, and it's the Cardinals trying to attack again. Smothered by the Cavaliers defensively right now. Trying to create something they might have here. Moving it in, they pop it up. Euland uses all of that 6-4 height to pop that ball and intercept that pass. As... A Cardinal player is on the ground after making a slide trying to save that ball in the direction of the stands. The medic crew is over there and the official has stopped play. And you can see just at that second blue panel right now, our view slightly obscured from what's happening down there. And the perfect unintentional medical screen right now as time remains stopped as a Cardinal player is being checked on. 
by the training staff. And it looks like he is going to lay up right now. Sit up, rather, excuse me, from the laying down position. And as he slowly gets up, looks to be holding that left shoulder, or excuse me, that right shoulder, potentially. May have just popped it out, unsure though. But of course, give our best wishes to Aiden Nokus, that is number 21, who checked in just moments ago, had a big time opportunity for a goal. Unfortunately, Colin Shuttler shut him down. And now it looks like he's gonna be taken off into the locker room, our best wishes for him to be okay from an unknown injury. As the play resumes, 1734, Cardinals still looking to find their way onto the board. They have four shots on goal in eight shots. Once again, fruitless. And not an unusual story for them. We talked about it at the beginning, the last time these two teams met, UVA scored in the first 61 seconds of the match. And although Louisville outshot UVA 7-4 in the second half, they were unable to score, leaving them at a 2-0 loss. As that ball is sent to the left of the frame off a fantastic defensive play from Reed Kessler. And it will be Colin Shuttler taking another goal kick with just under 17 minutes remaining in the match. And if you're just joining us, it's a beautiful evening here in Charlottesville, Virginia, on the grounds of the University of Virginia. And although we are still in quarantine times, Klockner Stadium, host to the family of the players and limited fan capacity for the start of the Virginia Cavaliers season here on the ACC Network, I'm William Fauche. It's a pleasure to have you with us. The Cavaliers found the back of the net in the second half with the help of Nathaniel Crofts. And it's still the Louisville Cardinals who although have had good chances remain scoreless off another miscommunication there. Cavaliers a chance for a good one-two opportunity but not enough on that ball. Now it's the Cardinals trying to play the three-man game. Cats, Cavs fighting aggressively for the ball right now. Something that we saw them do at the very beginning of this match, they laid off and started to play a little bit more conservative. However, now fighting aggressively for the ball wherever they can get it. And now the Cardinals have some room to work. William Portman lays that one off to Elijah Amo. Amo trying to direct his team. Fonseca, who had a good shot earlier, loses possession there, and now it's Crofts, the goal scorer for the Cavaliers, going the other way. Ops to slow it down, set things up with just under 15 remaining. And as the ball comes right back to him, it's deflected off the Cardinals. But as he pokes it back out, the Cardinals will regain possession. Crofts, the leading returning scorer for this team, Six goals and three assists last year. The co-captain finds the back of the net in the season home opener. And when we talk about this team, it's no surprise that the Cavaliers are playing well. A team that returns 10 of their primary athletes. Of those 10, eight saw action in over 16 games. Those 10 account for 23 of the 46 goals scored by the Cavaliers last season as Kevin Ogudugu checks back into the match for Kaya Ignacio. Ogudugu, who started the match, was subbed out earlier in this half and now finds his way back onto the pitch as Gelnovac works through some personnel. We're seeing a few more substitutions from him than we usually do, as we mentioned, because of his European style of play. But in the early season, after losing, 
the big four underclassmen, Joe Bell, Daryl DK, Henry Kessler, and Daniel Steedman to Viking FK, Orlando City SC, the New England Revolution, and Atlanta United 2, respectively. He's trying to find something that works. So are the Cardinals here as they push inside the six. Once again, Iricozzi Donaciano puts himself at the right place at the right time. And with good backing from Colin Shuttler, the Cardinals continue to remain scoreless. Pedro Fonseca could not find the back of the net there. And while awarded what is now their eighth corner of the night, they remain scoreless with 12.53 remaining. Hoping to change that here. Cardinal corner being set up. They decide to play it short. Go right back. And as they try to put it in there, Colin Shuttler gets a good hand on it, but a little bit of extracurricular contact puts him on the ground. As he's slow to get up, he did touch it though, so it will be another Cardinal corner. Taken by number four, Haji Adbi Kadir. And you can see Shuttler over on the left side of your screen, still got his hands on his knees, looking a little bit tender after taking that hit and hitting the ground, making that Stop on the corner kick. Now they're going to try their luck again, but it's up and popped out by Euland. Cardinals trying to keep the possession alive here at the top of the 18, but it's Donaciano who comes away. Donaciano lays it off. Steedman with the ball. Steedman has opportunity. There it is. It could be a dangerous chance. Ogudugu loses it, though, from a fantastic Cardinal double, double team as Gelnovac came out to meet him. And once again, the Cardinals... Stave off the Cavalier second goal that has seemed to come on several occasions. And as Donaciano bats that one away, it will be a Cavalier throw in. And you've got to respect the tenacity and persistence of this Cardinal defense, despite letting up a goal and numerous opportunities afterwards. They have stood strong and prevented any other leakage into the back of the net. And now they're going to try to break down the dam themselves, but unfortunately, a whistle blown, a foul called, no card awarded, but it will be a Cardinal free kick. Perhaps not quite in goal scoring territory, but definitely a dangerous spot for a free kick. It is Adbi Kadir who will take it for the Cardinals. Now watch here as everyone just floods in. He looks like he was actually going to take a shot, but sent over the goal and into the hands of Shuttler, who will now take a goal kick as he takes his time with 10.08 remaining. Kessler down the sideline, trying to get it there. It's Kevin Ogudogu. Ogudogu gets brought to the ground. Now he's trying to get back up. Can't get possession, but it's Cozy who meets the ball. Euland takes a hard ball to the stomach there, but breaks up the pass nonetheless. It's Spencer Patton now on the far sideline. Patton. Gives that one back, and now it'll come all the way back to Shuttler. And after taking that ball, Andreas Eulen, the co-captain, is now on the ground and called for an injury timeout as the official blows the whistle and stops the clock. And a full force ball taken direct contact by the co-captain. We highlighted him earlier, and he has certainly shown a spectacular season opening performance the freshman All-American who played every minute of every match last year as a true freshman, named co-captain as a sophomore, has done so much for this team both on and off the ball this evening and in his very young career. He is someone who has a very, very bright future ahead of him, both here at UVA and beyond. 
as he slowly gets up and gets some water with the trainers. Glad to see that he is okay as we are still without update on number 21, Aiden Nokus for the Cardinals, who went down earlier and was taken into the locker room. Once again, we give our best wishes for him to be okay. And as Eulen steps over once again towards the sideline, it will be Cardinals throw in on the far sideline. Or excuse me. It will be a Cardinals throw in. And as the official blows the whistle, the clock will resume to tick as it's put out of bounds. A classy move there by the Cardinals. As Colin Shuttler jogs over the Cavaliers, trying to set the pace of this match right now and take some clock off, now leading 1-0 as the Cardinals offense has seemed more and more formidable by the minute. It's Shuttler who's going to put this one up and towards the sideline. Iracozzi Donaciano gets it to Crofts. Keeping it alive is Ogadugu. Now laying it in. Patton on the far sideline. He's got Gunnarsson in front of him. But as a whistle is blown, it will be awarded to the Cardinals. Spencer Patton not happy about that call. Patton had a great night, did pick up a yellow card. However, has been phenomenal in creating offensive opportunities as Reed Kessler has that one fall into his lap and is going to get the throw in off the shins of number 14, Eric Dankwa. And as Brett Halsey taps that one back into Cardinal territory, it's Axel Gunnarsson who's meeting the ball with eight minutes remaining. And a big body there thrown around by Pedro Fonseca, trying to say it was just the shoulder contact, but Reed Kessler still on the ground now. After a big time hit, the official will blow the whistle and stop the clock. It seemed to be less the shoulder and more the contact with his foot as Kessler stretches himself out now and is able to get up on his own, but looks like he might walk towards the sideline to speak with the trainers as the officials sort out the clock situation. And you can really see the joy that the Cavaliers are playing with on the field, and it translated into that first goal when talking to Brett Halsey before the match, all he could say was that they were just itching to get onto the field, being the last team at Virginia to start their season for the fall, having two exhibition matches canceled and one regular season match postponed until the 14th. These guys were just ready to get out and showcase what they could do, get onto the pitch again, get a feel for how they work, and get that game experience. And clearly, it has worked for them thus far through 83 minutes. Can they close it out in the last 7.46? Only time will tell as they chase down their 300th win at Klockner Stadium to start George Gelnovach's 25th year at the university with a win. And it's Crofts trying to create some disturbance in the Cavaliers attacking third. That ball put down and headed out by Donaciano. Donaciano meeting Fonseca. Fonseca loses that one to Donaciano, and he's going to sit and hold it. Cavaliers playing very composed soccer late in this game. Now it's Crofts trying to make a play. It's Gunnarsson. Gunnarsson's got Portman, and a fantastic defensive play by number two, William Portman, who has been an absolute stud all evening for that Cardinal defense matching up against the speed and likeness of a host of Cavaliers. And once again, he makes the play that he needs to make to hold the Cavaliers at one goal. A phenomenal piece of defense from the junior from Sheffield, England. 
and will now be Spencer Patton's chance to say something back with this corner kick. 6.24 remaining. Cavaliers lead 1-0. And an additional whistle is blown from the main field as the official looks to be bringing both a Cavalier and a Cardinal over to have a word. No fouls given, no cards handed out, and the free kick will resume here with Spencer Patton at the helm. The ball is up into the 18. Cardinals get ahead on it. The Cavaliers trying to fight for something, can't get it. Now it's Elijah Amo who gets that one poked away. Joan Hibbert. He's got help around him and he goes to Patton. Patton manages to keep it alive and now it's Kessler. We've been asking to see him dribble, there it is. And he might have just created something for the Cavaliers. Now Hibbert, two in front of him. Trying to create some space but a good defensive play from the Cardinals. Slows him to a stop. And the Cavaliers are going to put that one out the back line, and it will be a goal kick for Jake Gelnovac. Abu Bakar Kamara checking in for Elijah Amo for the Cardinals as they get this throw in. Opt to give it back down to William Portman, who as mentioned has had a phenomenal night for himself. On the defensive end, Crofts going to be called for a foul there and it will be the Cardinals who get this free kick just inside the sideline. Cross going to be forced to back it up. And another opportunity for the Cardinals to strike. Can they do it this time? Ball is up into the 18. A dangerous chance but couldn't get the right direction and now it's Patton fighting for the ball. Cardinals Starting to move with a little bit more urgency. They put this one in. It's up high over the goal and out of bounds. As Colin Shuttler, unhappy about how something went down over on the near sideline. Nonetheless, he will have a goal kick. A whistle is blown, though. As the Cavaliers see number nine, Philip Horton, checking in for number 18, Axel Gunnarsson. And now it's Shuttler who takes this kick. 4-10 remaining and the clock resumes. Horton finds himself on the field again and with the ball. Portman on his back. Conti in front of him. Conti gets the best and now it's Portman with the ball. And Horton fighting hard and a little bit too much extracurricular contact there will give him the yellow. The third yellow card of the match, the second yellow card for the Cavaliers. Now it's Horton and Patton. A seemingly unnecessary foul there, but you can see the Cavaliers' frustration with William Portman. He has been a brick wall for them all this evening, and he continues to be throughout the final minutes of this match. Will it be enough to get them a goal? Only time will tell. 3.31 to make it happen though. As Iracozzi Donaciano misses that one, a whistle is blown as he went up in the air. And it will be a foul called on number 10, Carlos Sanchez. The senior from Madrid, Spain for the Cardinals. And Colin Shuttler will jog out to take this kick. Shuttler has a host of Cavaliers around the ball, but a high kick there from Sanchez as Halsey turns his head and Crofts is on the ground. And 
seems to be in some pain here as he went up for that ball. Iracozzi, Donaciano standing with him, calling over the trainer. And the official trying to discern what happened. It looks like the training staff is checking out that left ankle of Crofts as he remains on the ground. They're going to try to stretch him out here. Check his ankle as he feels up the leg, trying to get a read on what may have happened. As that ball got popped up into the air after the initial contact header, and bodies just started converging. And unfortunately for the Cavaliers, it was the co-captain who found himself on the ground, but now getting picked up by the trainers. He's not going to be putting weight on that left ankle, it doesn't look like, and it seems that he may be getting taken off the field. An opening night that has not been without injuries from both of these sides. Aiden Nokas, no word on him yet as he went into the locker room after a slide trying to save a ball, and now Nathaniel Crofts being helped off of the field, not putting weight on that left ankle, excuse me, as Axel Gunnarsson checks in for him. Of course, we wish for both to be healthy and if not, a speedy recovery. But though he goes off the field, there's still two minutes and 40 seconds of soccer to be played here as the Cavaliers look to close out their 300th win at Klockner Stadium. As that ball is put in, Horton fighting for it at the top of the 18. Cavaliers have some numbers, but it's Sanchez who makes a great tackle on Donaciano. Now taking it the other way with Cavaliers on his back. Cardinals trying to work their way down the sideline, but unable to connect with Abu Bakar Kamara. And it will be Andreas Uland, who took a hard ball to the stomach earlier. Hands it off to Reed Kessler, who now hands it off to Iracozzi Donaciano. And as another whistle is blown by the officiating staff, the clock will stop at 2.08. A slow final minutes to this match. Cavaliers get that into open spaces. And as we come under two minutes in this match, let's take a look ahead for the Virginia Cavaliers. They will face the Virginia Tech Hokies on the 14th in Blacksburg. After their match was postponed, intended to be on October 3rd, postponed now on the 14th. Then a quick turnaround the 16th. They will be back at home against Pitt, who definitely not a team to be trifled with this year crushed the Louisville Cardinals with a final score of 5-0 in their exhibition match. For the Cardinals looking ahead, they see us, they see Virginia right now, then looking ahead they see on the 16th Syracuse, in Syracuse, followed by Pitt on the 23rd. One minute, one minute the Under a minute left, the Cardinals trying to generate anything. They've pushed into the attacking third and have some room to work. 50 seconds remaining. Three in front of him. He takes a shot and a goal! With 50 seconds remaining in space to work, the Louisville Cardinals have found the back of the net on an absolute screamer. And Colin Shuttler in disbelief as that ball rocketed into the back of the net from Pedro Fonseca. He's had opportunities but had not found and when it mattered most, under a minute of play, he finds the back of the net. And there may be a big change of momentum there. As the Cavaliers were ready to take things home and walk away with a W, they now found themselves tied at 1-1. And it's just what we mentioned at the beginning of the second half. After they scored, this is a team that we've seen be complacent in previous years. 
And you could see they gave him a lot of space at the top of the 18. He wound up and Fonseca utilized what he got and found the back of the net. And that's one that is certainly going to stay in the minds of these Cavaliers throughout the rest of their season. As under 18 seconds left, Fonseca with the ball again. He tries to go in, Donaciano manages to break it up. That ball is popped up under 10 seconds. Both teams fighting for anything. A Cavalier on the ground, but the ball is popped up and out of bounds as the final seconds tick off of the clock. And at the end of 90 minutes, a final score of 1-1. One, one. We will now have a five minute break followed by 10 minute overtime period, sudden death. In an absolute screamer. The Cardinals stay alive. We will be right back after this.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Overtime in Charlottesville. How did we get here, you may ask? Well, 0-0 at the end of the first half. Nathaniel Crofts finds the back of the net in the 52nd minute for the Cavaliers. And just when things looked like they were coming to a close, it was Pedro Fonseca in the 89th minute who found the back of the net from the top of the 18 and brought us to free soccer in Klotner Stadium as the Cavaliers chase their 300th win at home. And overtime rules here. We will have a 10 minute golden goal period right now. If the score remains tied after this 10 minute period, there will be a second golden goal 10 minute period. If at the end of those two periods, because this is not a playoff match, the match will end in a tie. However, the first team to score will walk home the victor. And it's the Cavaliers who come out firing. Phillip Horton fighting for the ball, and some good aggressive play will grant the Cavaliers a corner to start this overtime period. The Cavaliers' fifth corner of the match. They are yet to convert on one thus far. However, an incredibly formidable set piece team. Any opportunity is a dangerous one for the boys in blue. It's number seven, Spencer Patton, taking the kick for the Cavaliers. Ball is up and into the 18. Horton's got a head on it, but cannot direct it to the goal. And it will be Jake Gelnovac who looks for his first win against his father, taking the corner kick in the overtime period. A thrilling match in Charlottesville to start the Cavaliers season. We're going to get a great feeling of what this team is really made of. As Patton gets that one off his head but falls out of bounds, it'll be Cardinal Ball. Up into the air, Halsey fighting for it. That ball gets chipped too. And that B. Kadir keeps the possession alive, lays it off. Cardinals now moving into the attacking third at the 18. Fonseca, who had the screamer before, takes a shot. A lot of power on it, but just outside the near goal post. Colin Shuttler collects for the goal kick. Puts it out short to Euland. A whistle is blown, and it looks like they're going to ask the Cavaliers to take that again. As Shuttler rolls it out, surveys his options, and awaits the official's mark. Instead of going short that time, tries to go long to Horton. Ball finds itself in the middle of the field, but now at the foot of the Cavaliers with a free kick. Euland, who throughout the first 54 minutes was quintessential in creating Cavalier offense. We saw Virginia move away from using their back line. Looks like they're going to go back to it here. Composed as ever. Gerbig lays it off to Patton. Patton to Horton. Horton, one on his back, tries to create some space. Instead, loses possession, but only for a brief moment as the Cavaliers now get a throw in. Patton ends up with his own ball. Now the Cavaliers trying to work to the middle of the 18. Instead, they back things up and find wide open spaces on the opposite end of the field. There's Eulen trying to chip it up for a run. Instead, it falls to Patton. Patton trying to keep the play alive off a bouncing ball. Can't keep it in bounds. And it's another Gelnovac goal kick, 625, remaining in the first golden goal period. If you're just joining us, it was the Cardinals in the 89th minute finding the back of the net to equalize. And we find ourselves four minutes into free soccer at Klockner Stadium. A host of Cavaliers surrounding Howard. He's forced to back it out. 
Now Donaciano with Fonseca behind him. Fonseca grabs it and gives it right back to the Cardinals. Trying to find him on a run. There's the ball. A whistle is blown, though. It looks like it will be offsides. As Abu Bakr Kamara tried to get that one in off a great little cut. Couldn't quite make contact and still on the ground for the Cavaliers is Oliver Gerbig. The 6'2 junior who's had a fantastic night defensively for himself. The transfer from Coastal Carolina from Taiwan making a name for himself early in this Cavalier season as Halsey goes back to Uland. 5-11 remaining. Halfway through the first golden goal period, it's Uland who tries to send the ball along. It's Donaciano. Donaciano trying to run it down the sideline. He's got some help in the middle of the field. Met by one, now met by two. Donaciano going to hit the ground on some extracurricular contact. The flag goes up. The foul is called, and it will be on Pedro Fonseca. And the Cavalier is going to get an interestingly positioned free kick here. Not sure if it's quite the angle for a shot as Patton steps over to be the only person on ball. Previously in this range, we did see Joan Hibbert go and join him. Instead, Hibbert will find himself at the top of the 18. Now it's Patton, two forming the wall for the Cardinals. He pops it up, Gelnovac punches it out with two fists, falls to Halsey. Halsey trying to keep the possession alive, gets into Hibbert. Hibbert, two in front of him, tries to take it towards the top, putting it in, isn't enough on it. Now it's the Cardinals going the other way. Kamara with Hibbert in front of him, holds possession but slows it down. Now trying to go long to Fonseca, Spencer Patton is there, and it's a one-on-one -on -one battle between the two number sevens. Patton wins that one, and the throw-in will be awarded to the Cavaliers. A lot of physical contact there between Kai Ignacio for the Cavaliers and the Cardinal defense. The Cavaliers come up with it, now 3.20 remaining. Trying to find something. Donaciano on the far sideline, one in front of him. It's Kamara. Cavaliers give to Patton, trying to find something. Patton trying to get someone into the open space he sees in front of him. Can't make it happen there. And now it's back to the Cavalier back line. A little 1-2 game between Gerbig and uh, Patton. Comes up fruitless. And the Cavaliers, who were ranked... Preseason number three overall. Slipped down to number five overall coming into this match despite not having played. Now find themselves in the first overtime period with unranked Louisville. And they're fighting for every inch of ground that they can get with 219 remaining in the first period. Moving it in. They go in again. The Cardinals get a hand on it. Now it's Hibbert. Hibbert. A flock of Cardinals ahead of him, and it's Patton with green spaces. Trying to work it in the middle. They haven't found success yet. Instead, they flip sides to Donaciano. Under two minutes in the first golden goal period. A second to follow if we remain scoreless. Donaciano trying to change it. Can't get it there, but he will get a corner for the Cavaliers. Cavaliers six corner kick. And once again, it's Patton taking it for the boys in blue. The hand is up. The ball is up and into the 18. It's Uland who gets ahead on it and scores 
but a whistle will be blown as Horton is on the ground. And despite Euland with a fantastic header to find the back of the net, it's a foul on Horton. And the Cardinals are saved by the whistle with under a minute left in the first overtime period. Score remains 1-1. Cardinals now trying to counter something. They give it to Kamara. Kamara, a host of Cavaliers in front of him. Try Fonseco. Fonseco can't get there. It's Donaciano to Halsey. Halsey trying to go long. A chance here for the Cavaliers. Ogudugu on the far sideline. One in front of him, one to beat. Can't get past, but gets the throw in. 14 seconds remaining. Going to try to play it in quickly. Halsey grabs possession with under 10 at the sideline. Gets past one, but that ball is kicked up and out of bounds. Will stay with the Cavaliers, but as the clock ticks down, the first period of overtime has come to a conclusion at Klockner Stadium. And despite a fantastic header from Andreas Euland, excuse me, a foul from Philip Horton prevented that from being a goal. And after a quick two minute break, we will be right back with the second and final 10 minute golden goal period here on the ACC Network. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Klockner Stadium and the Virginia Cavaliers' home season opener as they chase down their 300th win to start George Gelnovich's 25th year at the University of Virginia. It's the Louisville Cardinals who have fought back and fought hard to make it to this second and final golden goal period. The first team to score will walk home with a W. If there is no goal in these next 10 minutes, the match will end a draw for the number five ranked Virginia Cavaliers and unranked Louisville Cardinals. To recap how we got here, if you're just joining us on the ACC Network, Nathaniel Crofts, a fantastic goal for the Cavaliers in the 52nd minute. In the 89th minute, when the Cardinals needed it most, it's Pedro Fonseca with a screamer from outside the 18. Finds the back of the net to force overtime. With one minute remaining in the first overtime period, a Virginia Cavalier corner looked like it was going to be a goal off an Andreas Union Uland header. However, because of an off-ball foul by Philip Horton, the goal did not count, and we find ourselves here with 9.28 potentially remaining in this match. Once again, it is golden goal. The first team to score will walk away the victor and end the match. And it's the Cavaliers who have a chance to do it on this possession. A quick turnover. The Cardinals with some numbers work into the 18. There's the shot and an easy rolling pickup 
for the preseason All-American, Colin Shuttler, who has had a fantastic night and several critical saves to keep the Cavaliers in the position that they are in right now. And now it's Euland met by some pressure, trying to create clearance. Now Donaciano trying to find Horton broken up. Cavaliers still managing to advance the ball though. Cardinals keep it alive. Now it's Fonseca. Fonseca finds himself with it again and some space in front of him. Low Cardinal numbers to help. Kessler in front. Lays it into the middle. They try to go right back. Fonseca on the ground. No whistle blown. Clear frustration and an almost give and go between Pedro Fonseca and Carlos Sanchez. But broken up by the Cavaliers and now they look to counter. Keeping the play alive. Trying to move it in. The Cardinals retain, prevent the corner. And now have a chance to counter. As Kevin Ogudugu found himself on the ground at the back line. And as Pedro Fonseca still finds himself on the ground, Colin Shuttler goes over, throws it out of bounds. The whistle blows, the clock stops. And Fonseca still finds himself on the ground trying to stretch out what looks like might have been a cramp. And a good moment there between two guys that have just had a fantastic evening of play. Colin Shuttler has been big in goal for the Cavaliers and I mean Pedro Fonseca finds the back in the 89th minute to force overtime for the Cardinals. Two guys that have a lot of respect for each other and a lot of respect for what each other have done tonight. As Fonseca is helped up trying to keep Wade off that right leg but looks like he might be starting to apply some pressure. A night little, riddled with stoppage and riddled with injuries. But play goes on here as he's helped off to the sideline. And it's the big man, Colin Shuttler, who will end up with the ball. I mean, we've said it enough times this evening, but you really can't say it enough times with the level of play that he has performed at. The graduate student goalkeeper, Colin Shuttler, Lowest average goals against of active NCAA goalies has made numerous fantastic saves this evening. He's got five saves thus far, and they have been nothing short of spectacular. And now it's the Cavaliers trying to make all that work worthwhile with 725 left in the final golden goal period. The second overtime at Klockner Stadium as these two teams are leaving it all out on the pitch after what could be 110 minutes of soccer. Euland goes over to Kessler. Kessler has options in front of him, opts to go backwards. And now it's Shuttler trying to create some space. That ball is knocked out of bounds by Abu Bakar Kamara for the Cardinals, and it will be a Cavalier throw in. Reed Kessler going to step up to take this one. Kaya Ignacio. Going to check out of the match for Leo Alfonso. For the Cavaliers as they try to get something here, an opportunity too deep. Lost sight of the ball was Kevin Ogudugu. And now it's the Cardinals deep in their own territory, trying to create some clearance. That one's gonna roll out of bounds and stay in possession of the Cavaliers. 550 left, trying to find the back of the net to prevent a draw in their season home opener. It's Donaciano who hits the ground hard off of some contact. And he's slow to get up here, still on the ground. The fatigue of 104 minutes of soccer starting to get to these players and the officials are going to hand out a yellow card 
to Haji Abdi Kadir. That is the fourth yellow card that has been given out this evening. These two teams are leaving it all on the line, and it's Spencer Patton who has had several opportunities from around this location on both ends of the field trying to create something. The Cavaliers are lethal on set pieces. Let's see if they can do what needs to be done with 540 remaining. Patton loads up, puts the ball in. It's high and long and an easy grab for Gelnovac to jump up and get over the heads of both sides. And he's going to try to quick play it out to the Cardinals. With short time, every second matters for both of these teams. And that one's popped high and away. A little back and forth between these two teams in the midfield, but it seems to be the Cardinals who might be making a push. They give to Abdi Kadir. He's got some room in front of him. Goes with a long right-handed strike. Excuse me, right-footed strike. And Colin Shuttler, always on his toes, dives to the ground, pushes that one out. But it will be the Cardinals with a corner kick. Ample opportunities for them thus far as this is their 10th corner kick of the evening. Scoreless on all attempts thus far, but at this point, any opportunity is a great opportunity for this team, and they're going to look to convert here. 434 remaining in this match, goal or no goal. The ball is up into the 18, jostled around. Donaciano tries to get some clearance. The Cardinals take a strike. Off a couple of feet, Shuttler comes out, popped up and out of bounds by number five, Oliver Gerbig. A big time play as Shuttler was way out of position trying to collect that last ball. And number nine, Emil Elveroff, was looking at wide open spaces in front of the net had Gerbig not stepped in. Now, a Cardinal, another attempt from the corner. This one low comes in and is popped out of the 18. Leo Alfonso meeting Nico Diaz on the ball. Cavaliers pressing the Cardinals further and further away from the 18. They send that one in. Good header contact and Colin Shuttler gets a finger on it and is just able to tip it over the crossbar. The showcase continues for the preseason All-American goalie. And the Cardinals continue their onslaught of corner kicks. Perhaps third time's the charm. You can hear them from the sideline hoping so. That one's in, jostled around, still on the ground and now cleared. Caval Cavaliers trying to defend it once again into the 18, almost into the six, but a great piece of clearance there from Reed Kessler prevents it from becoming a goal. Cardinals still on the attack. Deep in their attacking third, but a whistle is blown. And it looks like it'll be a handball called on the Cardinals. As Donaciano leaves that ball for Euland and they play it in short in the corner. Over to Shuttler. Shuttler has some pressure coming. Cavaliers been on defense for a while now, need to create an attacking opportunity. Trying to do so here. Several hands up from the Cardinals and finally the flag from the officials offsides on Kevin Ogudugu for the Cavaliers. But you've got to respect the persistence and tenacity from the sophomore from Norway trying to create something for his team after he transferred to Virginia from the University of Portland, originally from Oslo, Norway. Cardinals managed to find some room, but not without Donaciano in it. Cavaliers trying to keep possession. Good double team from the Cardinals, and now the Cardinals, a little give and go. Some numbers and some room, but once again, Donaciano finds an interception and finds himself with the ball. 125, Donaciano still dribbling. Tries to put it through, it's Horton. Horton grabs it. This time lays it out. 117, short time, Cavaliers need to make something happen here. 
Pushing into the 18. There's some room. It's Alfonso. And a foul is called. A whistle is blown. Gelnovac is irate coming into the 18. It's a red card awarded. And checking in late, number 16, Leo Alfonso draws the PK that in the 109th minute could give the Virginia Cavaliers the win. It's been a back and forth game all night. The Cavaliers in the 52nd, the Cardinals in the 89th to create overtime. It looked like the Cavaliers got a goal from Ulan, but an off ball foul on Philip Horton brings the goal back and now it will be him, number nine, Philip Horton, the sophomore from New Albany, Ohio, taking the penalty kick that could give the Cavaliers their 300th win at Klockner Stadium, a win in their home season opener, and a win to begin George Gelnovac's 25th year at the University of Virginia. So much on the line, and it could be decided here as Gelnovac out of the goal, following his red card, And stepping in in his place will be Osmar Chavero, the 6-1 goalkeeper, the freshman from Mission, Texas, in a big-time play for the Cardinals. The whistle is blown, and it's all on Horton now. Drags it, and it's in. In the 109th minute, Philip Horton finds the back of the net on the penalty kick, and the Cavaliers lead 2-1. The golden goal is theirs, the win is theirs, and the Virginia Cavaliers find their 300th win at Klockner Stadium since its opening in 19.